I did want to add this because we really haven't spoken about uh, Arcade One Up. Uh, so Arcade One Up, they create licensed arcade cabinets, and these are like about three quarter size cabs, maybe two thirds, something of that order. Um, <coughs> so they're definitely are they just as tall though, skinnier, no. but just so you gotta like. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. They're three, qu- like I think they're about two thirds the size of a regular cabinet. So, like if you see them in person, and I've seen a lot of them in person, they, it does look funny, like when they don't have a riser. But you can hmm. buy these risers for them, so they okay. It's right, like thirty right, right, centimeters right. extra, and then at that point you can kind of play it. But they do look smaller. But then it does make perfect sense though, because you're not going to buy a full size cab. Like they are really hard to transport, like a full size hmm. cabinet. And they take up so much room. Whereas one of these, you could legitimately put it into a room or your house or anything. And it kind of looks, it kind of looks cute or neat. Like I've seen people's reaction when they see these one up, arcade one up cabs. And they're sort of like, oh, that looks kind of cool. Right. But then that's it for 99% of people. They're like, hey, whatever. Um, and is it, is it one game per cabinet? Yeah. So the way I'll explain. So the way it works is uh, they license the games and they then do the conversions. And normally what they'll do is they'll have a theme. So there's a whole bunch of games that are coming out at the moment. So they've got Xbox, uh, sorry, Xbox, X-Men four player. <laughs> so that's got X-Men, I remember that, yeah. Captain America and the Avengers and the Avengers and the Galactic Storm. Then they've got Dragon's Layer. So that's its own cabinet and it's got HD, HD transfers of Dragon's Layer, Dragon's Layer 2 and Space Ace. Killer Instinct, it's going to have its own cabinet. It's got Killer Instinct, Killer Instinct 2 and Battletoads. And then there's a Pong four player pub table which is a sit down version of pong but it's four player and then they also have tempest and super breaker so it's that kind of theme that kind Can of I, theme. I just say something a quick note about battletoads arcade um i don't know if you know this but in the rare replay collection you can yeah. unlock these amazing videos where they talk about all the games from like oh. tim stamper and everything like that and they they've put, some cool. up, they've put some of these up on the YouTube channel, I think, for Rare. But in one of those, they talk about Battletoads Arcade, which is in Rare Replay, where they actually say that they made a boss so difficult just to get people to have to use more quarters. Like, they actually heard about in the that, videos yeah. where they said, this is yeah. actually, they made it even harder, where it's almost <laughs> impossible to beat it on one life. You have to actually yeah. spend more money. So that's it's good that you don't actually have to, I'm assuming you don't have to put your own money into your own cabinet to play, but it's okay. <laughs> that would be actually funny if they did that. Um, and probably, you know, because like, I'm a very big purist, so I would really struggle in getting something like this, just because... You know, it, it, they use LCD screens. They don't use the CRT screens. You know, I'm a nutcase when it comes to this kind of stuff. But they are very, very cool, these things. And I think, I think it's, it's cool, but the fact that they're so... Sorry. The, the fact that they're... It's a single sort of set of games. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't even really... It's not even the real deal in that sense. Well, it's but a they're, scaled they're, officially, down. they're officially licensed. And they no, do no, look I'm amazing. Sure, I'm, do sure, look amazing. I'm sure they run great and everything like that. But I feel like it it becomes more of a niche thing because it's not oh, only yeah. do you not get the original thing at the original scale with the original shitty CRT screens, but you're very limited on what you can get. And if you want to get multiple games, you're just going to have to fill your whole house with cabinets. And I feel like how many people were so obsessed by X-Men that they're going to pay whatever it takes to just get this scaled down version of just well, that cabinet, unless you, you can mod to, it or hack it or do that choose, kind of stuff. Out of all of them, you happen to choose the one that is probably the most popular out of all of these because it's four player x-men um, well yeah that, and that but was, I mean, that's any like of, a cult hit that one it is a cult hit but even any of them you know you'd, you'd you'd have to be super loaded or really be saying to kill instinct to do that versus just to i don't know shove an xbox into a cabinet and play killer instinct on that it's yeah it's an interesting one this yeah, is and for I'm people that how sales will go. This is for people that aren't interested in building their own custom stuff because people have done that for years and years. This is for people that just want to buy something to have in their office. Um, you know, I've seen heaps of times mm-hmm. when I've been to a, an agency or something and they've just got these kind of cabinets just set up so that people can play them in their foyers. Not so much in the COVID days. We'll see yeah. how that stuff goes in the future. But um, no, I gotcha. And I almost feel like it, it, it almost feels like they're a business to business product almost more than a business to consumer product. That oh, I wouldn't say that. I wonder. I wouldn't say that. Well, I don't know. I, I, I would love to know what the sales are. I wonder if, if places like what you just said, Swinney, are more likely to get this than than the you know the everyday consumer when it's so limited in what you can do on this thing unless you can hack it or you can open it up to other things 
Yeah, like I, I know people... I personally wouldn't wouldn't fork even you know a hundred bucks to fill my room just to play one game. You wouldn't pay a hundred dollars to get one of these. Cabinets. Nah, nah. Unless that's, that's unless crazy. I knew you could you could mod it to do something else on it. I think so, how, much, I agree, how much are these retailing at? So I agree with Mike in the sense that there's a space cost, you know, like just for one game, yeah, yeah, like the, the amount of space this takes up. I understand, like the well, the three price, games, but... the price thing, like is, that's ridiculous, Mike. But the idea of this actually costs me in space is a huge thing, which yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah look, oh, by the way, I, I, there's no way those things would be that cheap. I'm just saying, even if they somehow got to that cheap, I still wouldn't spend a hundred bucks to I, fill my, my house up just to play one game. I just How much do these retail I, for? I couldn't believe, just wait, I'll get to that. I, I can't yeah. believe you wouldn't get it if it was a hundred dollars. Like no. really, you spend money on everything. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do You've it. You've got a PS5 in the background just as an ornament. That you don't no, play. but, but I wouldn't. No, no, I actually do play that. I wouldn't. I value like like Swinney just said. I value my space okay. too much to fill it with something that literally can only do one one little thing. Sure, It'd be sure. the most useless thing in my entire house, probably. <laughs> when you can get you can get a you know a little you can build a little tiny PC or you can get a Raspberry Pi and run a bunch of these games. How, yes, yeah. it's unlicensed. How and about stuff, so a, a cabinet sized but... cabinet size Super Mario Game and Watch? There we go. <laughs> no, I, de- so, I definitely wouldn't. So just on the price, so <laughs> in America, generally these things go for about four hundred US dollars, which I think for what it is and what you're getting is an officially it makes sense. Product, yeah. It's an amazing deal, like such a good deal. And you do like there's well, heaps of videos. I don't think it's on, a good deal. There's heaps of videos on YouTube where people have actually got like collections of these, like a whole room full of like. 20 of them and stuff like that. Um, Some people have too much money. Yeah, well, yeah, but people have... Uh, not hobbies, enough sense. They're crazy hobbies. Um, but collecting think, stuff like this isn't a hobby, but anyway. Well, I think this is the guy that has like 500 pens, so I don't think you can judge That's anybody. not a hobby, though. It's an addiction. <laughs> that is definitely not <laughs> a hobby. It's a It's a, it's a problem is what it is. Um, and in Australia, they, they do vary. Like, you can get them from Costco. I think that's generally the best way to get them in Australia. So they go anywhere from... It's like six hundred, seven hundred dollars to all the way up to a thousand dollars. It's it's way more varied in Australia than it is. That's States. nuts, though. Just to play three games, so dude, like it's I don't like get people, it. What they like to do, you know? So I know, yeah, don't get me wrong. Absolutely, people can do whatever they want, but I think it's just nuts. So it's a waste God, of space. It's a waste of money. So into God, they RK One Up has done NBA Jam cabinets before, haven't yes. they? Yes. And NBA Jam is probably their most popular cabinet and it's also the one that they put the most amount of effort in. So they actually have wireless, like Wi-Fi on that cabinet and you can play against other people uh, with their NBA Jam cabinets. So there's like okay, this whole like, cool. little network of people that are playing against each other in these arcade one-up cabs. I think Killer um, Instinct has uh, Wi-Fi as well. Um, oh, so cool. I guess they've taken cool. that. But Killer with Instinct NBA Jam too. specifically... Um, also wanted to bring that up because apparently they're making a documentary about it. Yeah, so there's this book that I wanted to get, actually. I love NBA Jam. It's like a real seminal game for me. And I think, you know, the game that I'm making, the AFL game, or I should say Aussie Rules game because I'll get sued by the AFL. <laughs> um, like, definitely, like, there's a lot of inspiration from NBA Jam. Like, that whole idea of I want to make a game where I can just hand a controller to someone and they can just play it. Like, it's not like a real mechanically sophisticated type of game or anything like that. And that was very much NBA Jam. So <clears throat> there's this really cool book about NBA Jam and it had been optioned for a documentary and it's actually now being funded. So they're going to have oh, cool. a documentary on NBA Jam. And I've actually read a lot of the book already. I don't own the book, but I've read excerpts and everything like that. And it's quite interesting and listening to the devs talk about how the game came about because they had to fight tooth and nail to get that game out there. Like the NBA didn't want it. They didn't believe in it. Like Hmm. a a big component for the NBA, and this is like, I'll tell you one story from the book, is the NBA itself, like the headquarters, David Stern, who was running it at the time, who's passed away uh, only last year. They were based in New York City. So in Times Square. And I don't know if you, you know, but like in the late 80s, early 90s, it was like a cesspit, like Times Square at the time. Like prostitution, like everything going on, drugs. It was crazy, right? So all these executives, they associated arcades with the cesspit that was Times Square at the time. So they thought it was like the most disgusting, like only, you know, horrible people go play at the arcades. So they had to like do so much work to get their mind shifted. And then they basically went to like 
the most suburban, friendly, like everyone's smiling, you know, nuclear family type thing and got these execs to see NBA Jam being played by families and things like that and they how had wholesome that in it the, is. So in the mini documentary on High Score, I think, was it called High Score, the one on Netflix? There was an episode on that covered it, a, a little bit of NBA Jam. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't yeah. go to this level of yeah. detail, but it covered, I think, little things like that. Yeah, so now I, now instead you can enjoy one of these cabinets in the cesspool of your own home. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. I really hope that they <laughs> mention something about uh, Michael Jordan because there's a whole thing about there's a version of the game that Michael Jordan is in the game. Yeah, because he's not in the normal one, right? No, and they built a specific ah. cabinet for him where he's in the game. <laughs> And there was a version of the game that they have it. So it still hasn't leaked. So I think one day it will. Um, so yeah, these things are cool. Don't listen to Mike, who's the hater. Like no, don't you, listen to me. Go spend your $1,000 to play one game and then hate yourself because you could have spent $1,000 on your children uh, instead. I, I just look at it and think about all the money you've spent on things. Where you're out hey, but that's why I have the ability. I've gone through that. I can tell people, <laughs> don't do what I did. Okay, children, I've gone through this. It's a bad idea. Don't waste your money on shit like this. <laughs> all right, let's get into the next item. I'll throw it. I'll be back in a sec.